Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the ultimate meg guide for scum. Now, this video is being made just before the 0.8 update, but I do not think anything major is going to change with the AI in scum for quite a while. So, um, one of my patrons requested this video um, because I don't really have any major issues with megs unless I want to play with them. So, I'm very, very technical when it comes to scum and I go very in depth with all the all the skills associated okay in scum but I also have a, a big need to have fun and that is why you guys will will see that I don't always do the right thing but if you have a problem with megs you need to adapt these 10 tips that I'm going to give you today so that you can get rid of a lot of frustration regarding megs and so that you can hopefully start playing on servers um, that have megs because a big part of the community like i think all the top servers don't have megs and i feel megs have got a major um part in scum okay um it's a very very big part of scum and if you want to be technical about megs then you have to call them sentries. <laughs> okay? A meg is usually something where a person can sit in, and a sentry is something that no human being sits in. It's just basically a sentry that can kill you. Okay? So, I'm uh, going to change the title with that. So, let's get as technical as possible. The perfect meg build, okay, is three right through the bank, and basically rifles wins overall with um, which skill you use the most running is very important so that you can dodge a meg trying to shoot you to give you you know the most running speed and that you don't get tired too quickly and then stealth is probably the biggest skill that when it comes to megs because the lower your stealth skill is the further away the meg will hear you as soon as you start running and most megs will turn around when you start running because of the noise that you're making, okay? So, the biggest mistakes that I see with players is patience, um, getting into their vision, and then not having a high enough stealth skill, okay? And then, if a meg shoots you, he's probably going to give you a C4 bleeding marker, and, you, you know, the higher your medical skill is, the, you, the less rags or bandages you are going to use to heal yourself, okay? So this is like the perfect anti-meg build. If you think this is just way too specialized, then you can always change it. You can take medium rifles, medium archery, medium running, medium endurance, medium stealth, medium thievery, medium medical and medium survival okay i call it the medium build in my upcoming ultimate guide i will show you guys various builds including my ultimate build which i think which has evolved over time okay but this is the closest thing that you can get to um a good build against megs because stealth is still a factor and i don't want you to take any skill lower than medium okay can you do it with no stealth yes you can but I, i'm this video is for people that are struggling with megs or just don't like megs okay and let's get back to sentries they don't like sentries okay so stealth is very very important the weight that you carry on you is um, makes more noise as well but we're going to go into that so i'm just going to start a fresh character i'm going to spawn into the map because of medium survival, I don't need a compass. So as soon as I spawn into the map, I can hold in my focus key. Like when I spawn in, I can open the map. I can see where the closest bunker to me is on the map. Then I can hold in my focus mode to see the compass so that I can fly towards that bunker as soon as possible. Okay. So if you get killed by Migs, which you know, can happen, and you respawn in the sector... This medium survival will definitely help you to not waste any time, okay? As soon as you respawn in that sector, you look at the map, you look at where the bunker is, 
you hold your focus mode to get the perfect direction to be to fly towards the bunker and that will help you a lot so let give, let me give you a quick example of that Okay, so here we are. Okay, you can't open the map until this, um, you know, until this finishes, until the black bars goes away. Then I open the map. I see this is where I am. I know that's where the bunker is. So that's northeast. So I open my focus mode and I focus on going northeast. Okay, focus on going northeast. My guy's gonna open his. My guy's hands are going to be released very soon. So I just hold in my W key and I save as much time as I can. And what I want to do is I want to open the parachute just before I hit the trees. Okay, to give me a kind of boost here. And then I want to press the W key, the S key, sorry, before I hit the ground. I don't want to keep in the W key for that maximum speed because Secure if I keep it in... Okay, so... Yes, holding the W key when you open your, your uh, parachute just before you get to the trees is a great way to have forward momentum. But before you hit the ground, you need to press the S key to slow yourself, yourself down, okay? And that's why I don't take any damage. So now we're quite close to the bunker. And all I'm going to do now is just quickly craft uh, um, a bow, okay? But because of the survival skill... I'll be able to do this a lot faster. So it's not only the compass that is giving you, okay? Your crafting and your searching will be much, much faster as well, okay? So if I craft the stone knife, that there is faster. Okay, so I'm just... So just realize that if you want to get back to your body, um, if a puppet killed you, you can just quickly craft the stone axe, okay? But if a player killed you, you either have to just give up or try and attack him with the axe, which will usually never be a good idea. Even if you've got Danny Trejo, attacking a geared player with a machete is never a good idea. The best chance you have is of crafting a bow, okay? Because with a bow, you can clear the pup, you can clear multiple puppets. It can be complicated to clear, clear multiple puppets with an axe. Um, and then you can shoot him. If you shoot him in the leg and you shoot him in the head, you can still kill him. Okay, and you can you can shoot him from a distance. That's the big thing. Okay, you can shoot him from a distance. Um, you can wait outside the bunker for him, you know, sit in a bush or whatever the case would be. It's just the bow has a better chance. But I highly suggest if you get killed by a player, just, just call it quits. Okay, but I'm just going to quickly craft the bow so that we can alleviate the puppet complications at a bunker. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the bunker. Okay, so I used the compass to get here quickly, and I used the medium survival skill to craft myself a quick little improvised courier backpack, 12 arrows, a bow, and of course I needed the axe to chop down the tree to get, you know, to chop down the branch to just get sticks a heck of a lot faster. You can basically just cut down bushes if you want to but i feel having a melee weapon and having a ranged weapon is very very important okay so this is the b3 bunker so patience is your first major strength versus a mech okay and you can figure this out at every single bunker within about 30 seconds easily okay so just by looking at this mech for 30 seconds I know that he takes 12 steps away from the gate, okay? So for 12 steps, he has vision of the bunker entrance, okay? Actually 16 because he's got, he's got vision there as well. And then for 12 steps, he hasn't, he hasn't got vision of the bunker entrance, okay? So let's count this quickly. He's going to stop. He's going to walk to me. Okay, so let's count the steps when he turns around. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay? Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen steps that he's looking away. Or he's looking at the bunker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Roughly 12, 13 steps that is looking away. Okay. So for me to get out in here, I know I've got about 13 steps before he's going to turn around and see me. If I'm far away from him, because he's clearly not going to hear me. And then as soon as I've gotten a, gotten a position close to the bunker entrance, then I know I've got about 13 steps where I can get into the bunker without him seeing me. But I have to wait at to about five or six steps before I go for it. And the pause that he makes there is going to help me quite a lot. I don't want to run into the bunker when he turns around because he's going to hear me. His biggest strength is the hearing. And when you walk, you can just look right here at the speaker the little speaker icon, that's the amount of noise that you make, and this indicates when something can see you, okay? So we're just looking at the speaker. If you don't want a person to hear you, then you're going to crawl because you're almost, you're almost not going to make any noise, okay? Or you can crouch because even with crouching, you're not going to make a lot of noise, okay? But as soon as you stand, you're making more noise. As soon as you jog, you're making more noise. And as soon as you run, you're making a, more noise, and the more gear you have on, on you, the more noise you make as well, okay? And that's why Meg usually hears you when you run, because you're not willing to jog, okay? And half that, that speaker or half the sound that you're making. So you'll jog, he won't hear you, and then you start sprinting, and then he turns around and shoots you because of the noise that you're making, okay? So tip number one was the build. Tip number two is the sound icon. Tip number three is every Meg has got 180 degree vision radius, okay? So a half a circle in front of him, if he sees you in that half circle, he's going to shoot you, okay? And he's got a height um, vision cone as well. Because he's high up, okay, you need to make sure that if you stand behind a bush, Okay, if you stand behind a bush, he won't see you. If you stand inside of a bush, he, he can't see you. Okay, so you can sometimes make a mistake if you go and stand behind a bush because you're holding the bush between you and him. But if the bush is a little bit too short, if you're standing behind the bush, okay, crouched behind the bush, and then he can see, then, then his degree, you know, the height at which he can look at you from can maybe spot you behind the bush. I like to be behind bushes most of the time, okay? But if you want to play it safe, you have to be inside of a bush for him not to see you, okay? So be very aware of they can see you from very, very far away, okay? But you just need to be behind their vision cone. So you just don't want to be in front of them at all, okay? And then the, the fourth thing is never shoot a Meg, okay? Um... Normally, the only reason to shoot a Meg is to maybe help your friend to get into the bunker, okay? But instead of shooting the Meg to try and help your friend get into the bunker, rather just show him this video. Share this video with him, and then, you know, he won't have Meg problems anymore. And then, of course, you need to focus on his steps because that's, you know, that gives you the time that you have, okay? And then the fifth step is use the bushes for cover. Inside a bush, you are invisible, but he can still hear you move, okay? So the biggest mistake that you can make when you're in a bush, especially close to him, is to move. Especially after a Meg has seen you and you run into the bush, you want to stand still, guys. You don't want to do this. You, you just want to freeze when you're in a bush, okay? Because he's only going to walk up to that bush and then he's going to walk away. But if you turn to look at him, the branches will attract him. If, he, if a Meg's on top of you, he will hear you no matter what your stealth skill is, okay? So it's very important. Within a two-meter radius, do not move 
when a Meg is close to you. Because it doesn't matter if you're inside the bush, which makes you invisible, he's still going to hear you and he's going to move towards the sound. Stepping on you, killing you, crushing your equipment. Okay? And then try to not run. Okay? Uh, of course, you know, running is always good when he's far away from you. But if he's close to you, try to not run because that's just going to increase the chances of him turning around and shooting at you. Okay? And then the other thing, guys, is a Meg can see through the gate. Okay? The gate is not uh, a cheat. Okay? The gate is this Meg's, this sentry's border. The sentry has been programmed to protect everything inside of the gate. It must ignore everything outside of the gate. Okay? So why do I say the gate doesn't make you invisible? Because I can stand right here inside this gap, okay? And as long as his lights, as long as his lights are um, white, he doesn't have a problem with me. I'm not breaking the rules. As soon as he sees me step into his zone that he needs to protect, he's going to shoot me, whether I'm inside the gate or outside the gate, okay? When his lights are white, even though I'm standing in the open, okay, clear vision of him, he will not shoot at me because he's programmed to protect whatever is inside of the of the gate borders. Okay, so it's not the fact that uh, that Megs can't see you through the gate; it's they are programmed to protect everything in the zone. And if you don't enter the zone, they don't have a problem with you. If you enter the zone, they see you, and you are not running deeper into the zone, then they're going to ask you to hold up your hands. But even if you run. If you run and, you know, and don't stop immediately, as soon as they see you, like that split second, they're not going to even talk to you. But if you're walking inside of the zone and they see you and you stop immediately, and you press F4, okay, you just press F4 to hold up your hands and you don't press anything else, let him talk to you and tell you to leave the zone. And as soon as he's done talking, then you move out, then you run out of the zone. Okay, it's going to give you about three seconds. And when a Meg shoots at you, he will only shoot to where you are. So if you run away from a Meg, don't just do this, okay? This helps sometimes, but the thing is, your movement is too close to one another, especially when he's far away from you, because his bullet takes time to get to you. So if you just dodge his bullets like this, that then because of the travel time, when you're here, he shoots, then you do this and this, and you run into that bullet. Okay, so when you are trying to dodge a Meg's bullets, run across from him. Never run towards him because he's going to shoot to where you are. So he's definitely going to hit you. Never run away from him because he's going to shoot to where you are and still hit you. Okay, run across from his vision. Okay, across from his vision. That's going to give you the best chance for him not to hit you. But of course, there's a single player on multiplayer because of ping, you know, it's a little bit more difficult for him to hit you. But on single player, um, all the AI reactions are way, way faster. Okay. So now that I've explained how Megs work, that is why Meg shoots you through a gate because you've alerted him, you've broken the rules, and then you go outside the gate and then he shoots you through the gate. As long as you don't enter the gate, you're fine. Okay, now flares do help. Okay, flares do help. So to shorten this up, I'm just going to go flare here. Okay, and the big thing is a flare doesn't help unless you ignite it. Okay, so you need to ignite the flare. Okay. I'm just going to open the gate because I'm not, I'm not breaking his rules. And then I'm gonna throw then I'm gonna throw the flare. Okay, so they have alerted him. Okay? Oh, I've, al I've already broken the rules. That's why he's shooting me. He doesn't care that I'm outside the gate. I opened the gate. Okay? Which he's programmed to if you open the gate and he if he sees anything through the gate, okay, then he's programmed to kill kill you. So now he's in high alert, okay? Very, very dangerous. And now, again, get behind the bush and don't move. That's it. Get behind the bush and don't move. Okay? 
give him some time. And he'll get back to his route. So let's let's see the flare is still there. Okay, flare is still active. Now watch what happens when he sees the flare. I'm gonna go here. Let's quickly see what happens when he sees the flare. Nothing. Okay. There, he sees the flare. Okay. He sees the flare. So, if the flare is on open ground, like a gravel road or a tar road or anything like that, then it does keep his attention, okay, but not for long. It doesn't keep his attention for long because he's still moving around, okay? So if you throw the flare perfectly, if you throw it on the grass, it's not going to work that well, okay? Um, but it can still keep his attention for quite a while. Okay, so I'm just going to spawn in another flare. Got to ignite it again. You have to ignite it. Okay, now I'm going to throw it. And it's on me again. So if you do this before he sees you, then the flare will have a heck of a lot of power, okay? If you do this after he sees you, the, the flare will not have that much power, okay? Flare will not have that much power. So that's why I say, can a flare keep him engaged? Yes, but you have to throw the you have to throw the flare perfectly, okay? And then the other thing is if you throw it and he sees you throwing it, he you know, like he looks towards it because the flare is still attracting you. The flare is attracting his attention even while it's traveling through the air, okay? And that can also make him see you. The negative thing about that is that you have to think about the PvP aspect of it as well if the mech keeps standing still that is a clear indicator for a player that something's going on if there's a player inside the bunker then it's a clear indicator to him okay that something's going on okay so i need to go north I need to go northeast northeast okay so i need to go northeast I have to open before I get to the tree line. Okay. Again, compass. Compass helps a heck of a lot. So, clearly we don't want to open the gate. Okay, so we take the flare. We put it in our hands. We ignite it. Again, guys, look at me. I'm not hidden, even if I wear camouflage or whatever the case would be. I'm not hidden. I am I am showing the entire world where I am, especially at night. You cannot do this at night. You are you're alerting every one of your of your position. When you throw it on the road, the person could still hear the flare. Okay? So PvP wise, the flare is extremely bad. Meg wise, the the flare isn't too bad. Okay? Now we get stuck on this. So I'm going to throw the flare now. Not even sure where the flare is. <laughs> Let's try this again. See, see, just because I saw the flare, he's looking at me, but he's ignoring me. Because I am, I'm not breaking the rules. He saw me, but he's ignoring me because I'm not breaking the rules. So there's the flare, okay? If any player knows how a flare works, and he sees, he, he, you know, he hears the meg's not moving anymore, that's a clear indicator, okay? And again, 
sometimes the flare works perfectly and he keeps looking at the flare. Sometimes he just looks at the flare for three seconds, okay? And then ignores it. Okay? So again, let's see let, let's see how how long it takes us to figure out this meg. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven. Eight. Okay. So there the flare is bothering him again. Again, guys, if someone's inside the bunker, they can and they know how what a flare how a flare works, okay? Then um, it can give your position away. Light igniting a flare can give your position away. Throwing a flare because the sound that it makes can give your position away. Okay? So that's why I say, does a flare work? Yes, but you have to throw it perfectly. And sometimes he stays on it, sometimes he doesn't stay on it. You can see every time he moves, he's breaking contact with the flare. You see? One, two, three, four, four seconds. That's how long the flare keeps his attention. But unless you threw it perfectly, you know, it's not going to make such a major difference. So that's why I say, do flares work? Yes. Um, but it adds complications to what you're trying to do. So always come in from an angle with cover and bushes. Okay. So I always like to come in from the front. Um, but I mean, you know, this is, this is a better way of coming in. So... I see these bushes here, but I have to see if there's bushes down there as well. So that's my first bush. That's my second bush. How quickly can I get to the other bush? I'm not extremely, I'm not very, very sure. There's a bush. There's a bush. There's a bush. He's walking away for quite a while. I can definitely use that bush. And if I look at the entrance, that bush is an option and that bush is an option. But since he spends most of his time on this side of the bunker entrance, I'm rather going to use that bush. Okay, so clearly I want to come in from this side. Okay, bushes are overpowered. Overpowered. Okay, so we just got to look for a gap here. That's a little bit too far away. I'm rather going to use this. Okay, so now I'm just going to look, wait for him to... And I, and I don't want to run. I don't want to run when I'm in here. Okay, so... Now I'm just going to jog. Up to this bush right here. Stand inside the bush. And then I'm going to jog to this bush over here. Okay. Then I'm just going to stand, stand in this bush. Or crouch in this bush. So that's why I say, if you know the Meg's route, this becomes very, very easy. And because you're jogging, you're not making a lot of noise. Making the chances less for him to hear you. Making the chances less for a player to hear you. Okay. And like I say, always look for the closest bush to the entrance, okay? And then run when he's done about when he's done with about 50% of his route. This meg clearly has a very big route, but other megs have very short routes. So you want to wait until they basically halfway in that route, um, just to be sure, because you have to focus on the sound, okay? Or you can jog immediately, but you're going to figure out over time, you know, what's the distance that he can hear you at and that he can't hear you at, okay? And again, I don't want to. I don't want to run. I don't want to. I don't want to sprint or freak out. Okay. <laughs> okay i wanted to lock them up inside a room guys but uh, clearly on official this is single player official settings okay that was quite a few few puppets there but of course if i had the bow i could have killed them very easily and then you know you can even close them inside of a room just takes a little bit of practice Okay, and then megs are a major part of scum. Okay, so get out there and enjoy it, soldiers. Have fun. Figure these things out, okay? So hopefully this video will help you guys. Use the steps to time to let you know how much time there is. Make sure you have at least medium stealth, okay? 
if you if medium stealth still bothers you take advanced stealth okay that means that just means you're gonna have to grind the other skills but if megs is is your biggest frustration in this game take advanced stealth okay and just focus on the cones use bushes to your advantage i like to still be behind the bushes okay so that i've got more freedom but being inside a bush is always a great way. And the only thing that you have to remember when you're inside a bush is not to move because the mech can still hear you if he's very close to you. And being behind a bush is still not good for PvP because you a player can clearly see you. If you're inside a bush, a player can't see you, you know, so there's a lot more advantages to that. Okay. So guys, if you've got any other questions, okay, so I try to give you the technical part of a meg which I don't always explain when I go into a bunker or when I'm near megs, but I know exactly how they work. And when I encounter something in the game, I try and figure it out technically, but then my fun factor takes over. So that's the biggest tip I can give you with this game. Don't get too technical. Have fun. It's a game. Just have fun and don't let a meg frustrate you. Don't let a person affect you emotionally okay and don't let a meg affect you emotionally okay unless it's good emotions good emotions good bad emotions bad okay be like a piece of rubber when it comes to bad intentions or bad feelings and be like a sponge when it comes to good intentions and good feelings okay so if you like this video do me a favor and just click the like button if you want to see and learn everything there is to see and learn about Scum, then just click the subscribe button. And if you want to help me to do this full time one day, the Patreon link is down below. Okay. Have a great day, guys. And stay safe. Cheers.